The FBI uh, director, Chris Wray, has uh, been threatened with a contempt citation by the House of Representatives for refusing to abide by this simple subpoena. I want to talk to you about more corruption by the irredeemably corrupt FBI and Justice Department, I would add. Now, I've talked to you previously about how there is a form out there that uh, basically a whistleblower went to James Comer and um, Charles Grassley, who's the senator from Iowa, and the whistleblower said there's a document the FBI has detailing an allegation, a substantial allegation, that President, then Vice President Biden was involved in a bribery scheme involving a foreign national. And, uh, and it's quite obvious that uh, based on Comer's, Comer's interest in this and Grassley's interest in getting this document, it's substantive. So it's not like it was like a, a tip that came from someone calling from a street corner. In fact, Fox News said that the confidential human source they're reporting today was someone that the FBI had repeatedly used and had been deemed as credible, used during the Obama administration as well. So this is a substantial uh, 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 allegation against Biden and certainly fits in and is consistent with the information we already know about Biden corruption through the Hunter Biden laptop, Tony Babalunsky, the new records that uh, Comer has highlighted showing uh, these unusual foreign transfers of monies to front companies for the Biden family, 10% for the big guy, all of that. Uh, but Director Ray, and there's a form in which the FBI has documented this allegation. And of course, there's got to be, I hope there's an investigative file. I guess the concern by the whistleblower is that this was buried. So that's going to be interesting to see. And of course, Ray doesn't want to turn it over. And he's resisting it so much, he was willing to almost to go into contempt. That still may happen. And create a constitutional crisis, all to protect Biden from the, from you know, being exposed potentially to more significant public allegations of corruption. So this is the most recent letter I could find on Comer's, um, you know, uh, Comer's concern to Ray about his failure to comply with a subpoena about this document. He had asked back in, I guess it was almost a month ago now, uh, for uh, these records, the whistleblower disclosures, indicated that the FBI and Department of Justice are in possession of what is called an FD-1023 form describing an alleged criminal scheme involving then-Vice President Biden and a foreign national relating to the exchange of money for policy decisions. Uh, that same day, the committee also issued a subpoena, that was on May 3rd, requiring the production of all FD-1023 forms, including with any open, within any open, closed, or restricted access case files created or modified in June 2020, containing the term Biden, including all accompanying attachments and documents to those FD-23 forms. So it's a pretty comprehensive request, but narrow enough that they can respond pretty quickly. And they were supposed to give them the documents on May 10th. And it's now June what is it, the second today? And they still don't have the documents. And uh, Comer in this letter goes through the back and forth, which I won't get into because it was just the FBI stonewalling. But what I found interesting about this letter is the disclosure of the following information. The FBI's refusal to produce this single document is obstructionist. Nevertheless, to narrow the breadth of the subpoena, we are providing additional terms based on unclassified and legally protected whistleblower disclosures that may be referenced in the FD-1023 form. So I guess Comer is pretending to believe that the FBI may not know exactly what form they're looking for. And he uses the following search terms. He adds them. Uh, June 30th, 2020. So this seems to be an indication that something this is going on right in the middle of the election season. And five million. He didn't say five million dollars, but you know, I don't know about you, but what, what conclusion do you draw from that? 
Did the bribery scheme involve something around June of 2020, and did it involve $5 million? I don't know. So, long story short, the FBI uh, director, Chris Wray, has uh, been threatened with a contempt citation by the House of Representatives for refusing to abide by this simple subpoena. Now, they offered to let Comer come over and review the document, uh, though heavily redacted. I think Rashley saw the document. He wants to release it. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I don't know if you know Chuck Grassley, but you know he's he's probably nearly 90 now, and he doesn't really suffer fools gladly. I mean, he just doesn't give a crap uh, about the typical government obstruction that other senators and congressmen tolerate. And I don't always agree with every one of his votes. Who does? But um, you know, on when it comes to matters of whistleblowers and government corruption, uh, he's been a long-term leader uh, that I've admired for some time. And he's like, well, I think there's something here. I don't know whether the allegation is true. I do want to know if the FBI investigated it, and I do want the document released. So where things stand now is that uh, uh, Gray or people from the FBI are going to bring it over to Comer at the House next week, and we'll see if that's sufficient enough for Comer uh, to withdraw or to stay the contempt citation. But it just shows you the hypocrisy of this Justice Department that is, has prosecuted others for contempt of Congress, but is engaged in active obstruction and contempt of Congress on a document to protect Joe Biden. Now, they've always have a bunch of reasons for not wanting to turn a record over, none of which hold water legally or constitutionally. And uh, just because you have objections, it doesn't mean that you get to stop producing records. You, you give the record, you, you know, there are ways legally to assert these objections while providing the requested material, and the FBI wasn't interested in doing that. So this was just more corruption by the FBI. And what's frustrating about this is, uh, in my view, is that Ray should have been found in contempt a long time ago. And I guarantee you that uh, a further investigation or even just asking the question will show that um, uh, Ray uh, had the approval of Garland to withhold this information. I mean, the Justice Department's part of the FBI. People forget this. Now, the FBI is not, a, quote, an independent agency. Uh, the FBI is, a, is an agency within the Justice Department and answers to uh, Attorney General Garland. So what did Garland know about this contempt for Congress by Ray? And the other frustrating thing is, Despite all this corruption by the FBI, this is just more of the same, right? I mean, they've been burying Biden material. We've had it alleged time and time again, quite credibly, since at least 2019, if not before then, is that the FBI and Justice Department get all the money in the world still. I mean, you've had this big fight this week about this debt funding, which resulted in the incredible, you know, the incredible outcome that um, the debt ceiling has been completely removed. You heard that right. There is no debt ceiling. So the Congress can spend as much money as they want in terms of adding debt to uh, your liabilities, right, and those of your children and grandchildren. And of course, you know, all those monies include currently full funding for the FBI and Justice Department at extreme levels. Like the FBI's budget is now I'm going on memory because I saw the budget document a few a few weeks ago. What did I say it was? Thirteen billion? Yeah. I think that's what they're asking for. It's eleven to twelve, eleven to thirteen billion. If thirty seven thousand people working for the FBI. No haircut for them though, despite this corruption. So uh, Judicial Watch has separately asked for this document. And now is it possible we won't sue for it when we don't get it? I guess that's possible, but unlikely. I know, I haven't been here for, I think it's now almost 25 years at Judicial Watch. I can say with certain certainty that we will likely sue for this document, and we will likely be fighting about it and may even get a public version of it before we get it from Congress, because usually that's what happens. 
So you could be sure that despite this game that Congress is playing, and I appreciate Comer pushing hard on this, and Grassley pushing hard on this. I mean, in the past, it was a year or two of fighting before Attorney General Holder was found in contempt. And it was done over the objections of the House leadership at the time, the Republican House leadership. Here, McCarthy, you know, I don't agree with McCarthy's approach on the debt and tactical issues like that, but you know, he's been hardcore on this particular corruption issue and very insistent uh, that um, uh, uh, Ray do what he's supposed to do as required by law. Uh, so they've moved relatively quickly on this, but it doesn't mean they're going to get the document in a public way as soon as we like. But who knows? I mean, I got to hand it to them. They have been getting some information out there that previously would have taken some time to get. And a lot of that, and, I, and I'm going to praise Judicial Watch here. I'm not doing it because I'm, well, I guess I am doing it because I'm president of Judicial Watch, but I think it's a fair analysis uh, because I speak to a lot of members of Congress that, uh, Judicial Watch, our work, our historic work, uncovering records that Congress has been unable to uncover, or had been unable to uncover, incentivized members of Congress to do more to get the records. Because no one likes to be shown up, right? I mean, all these members of Congress, if I had a nickel for every member of Congress who said, I can't believe you get these records and we can't. And they're tired of it. And, and they should be tired of it because they have a right to these records as Congress in a way that Judicial Watch, you know, we can't get all the records that even Congress can get. But we usually pursue it through a legal process and Congress has got this political process they have to go through first. Uh, so it's Judicial Watch's leadership that I think has helped spur uh, this um, uh, more, much more significant interest and aggressiveness uh, by the House in investigating government corruption. Is it as much and is it as aggressive as I like it to be? No, it never probably will be, but it's leagues better than it used to be. So kudos to Judicial Watch for, again, showing the way uh, and providing leadership uh, to Congress in how to investigate and provide oversight over this ginormous government we have. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.